unfortunately, I have here a speech, not open and remark, but I try to deal it with shorter. Dear Ambassador Ischinger, dear panelists, dear President Gibelskaite, President Ministro, President Pevneliev, ladies and gentlemen, I arrived here today with a very vivid memories of this conference from the last year. It was just before Ukraine was paid to the bitter price over the hundred innocent lives lost on the Maidan for the right to become a democratic and European state. And I had felt such pride for my country here today in Munich. For 50 times, this gathering has recognized that commitment, responsibility, and values are fundamental cornerstones of global peace and security. And I felt so proud then because Ukraine has reminded Europe and the world that democracy and values are worth fighting for. That was time when we believed in international law. The confidence that territorial claims, aggression, a right of might belong to the past, at least on our continent. But now this confidence has been shattered. Year 2014 rolled time back, decades if not the centuries. Our neighbor has breached international law and annexed part of our territory. Today, a former strategic partner is waging a hybrid war against sovereign state and co-founder of the United Nations. Mounds of lies and propaganda have been heaped into the wall of hatred erected between two once very friendly nations. The border routes once used for the transporting goods and exchange of visitors and friends now swarming with the Russian tanks, armed personal carrier, with the multiple rocket launchers and ammunition. How many evidence does the world still need to recognize the obvious fact? There is a foreign military equipment, mercenaries, Russian military coaches, tanks, and the regular troops. I take with me the passport and military ID of Russian soldiers, Russian officers, who were come to us and leave it together with that. This is the best evidence for the aggression and for the presence of Russian troops. We make a lots of press conference demonstrating to the whole world of the Russian soldiers and officers which lost his way 100 kilometers from the border with the full tanks of ammunition, killing my soldiers and killing Ukrainian civilians. Dozens, hundreds, thousands. And that lasting long for the already more than eight, um, eight months. This has become a spiraling tragedy for my nation. The death toll for the Ukrainian soldiers defending land from aggressor is now 1,432. Thousands of the people, 5,638, have killed since the April and every single day. The number of victim among the civilians is rising. And even today on the Balsevo, when yesterday we proposed the ceasefire for the corridor humanitarian for withdrawal of civilians from the Balsevo, they said, OK. And we delivered 10 buses, 10 from Ukrainian city Slavyansk and Kharkiv, and 10 from the occupied Donetsk. All our 10 buses was filled to the civilians which want to go to Kharkiv. Among 10 of the Donetsk buses, it was half filled, just one. That is a very good demonstration. People support either sovereign and independent Ukraine or the Russian Spring or Russian, me Russian world. Well. 
Hundreds and thousands of civilians have become innocent victims of terrorist financed trade, trained, equipped by Russia. 298 innocent victims of downed MH17 flight was hit and down by the Russian equipped, Russian trade terrorist, which kept all the nation from Australia to the United States. That's a very effective form of demonstration that the terror is not the headache just of Ukraine or just of our continent. This is the problem of the whole world. 16 innocent civilians killed in bus shelter in Volonavaha. Eight dead in trolley bus shelled in Donetsk. Can you imagine 31 civilian casualties in Mariupol shelling by Russian provide rockets and more than 100 wounded in just the one moment? And this is the price Ukraine pay for their values, for their freedom, for their European vector of development. The children of the Baltzeva will never be able to get rid of the memories of the night they spend in freezing basement, hiding from the explosion and blast. One million internally displaced persons, one million, have escaped from the horrors of the war. One million to the free part of Ukraine, and only 70,000 to the Russia. Very easy to compare. I would like to thank our international partners and all of you for your humanitarian support helping these people to start life from the new slate. Nadia Savchenko, a pilot of Ukrainian Air Force, the captain of my army, has spent 237 days in a Russian prison where she was just taken from my territory, just for the fact that she defend their own land as an officer of my troops. And today is the 57th day of her hunger strike against her illegal abdu abduction and imprisonment. And this highly reminiscent to the Soviet repressive machine now applied to break the courage of Ukrainian women and an officer of Ukrainian Air Force. And we say free Nadia, but we mean that every single Ukrainian who was captured and tortured just for the defending their own land must be released. The war exhausts Ukraine daily, affecting the lives of its citizens. And we have lost 20% of our industrial output. 10% from these 20 are physically destroyed, are in ruins because of the Russian attack. The fighting in Donbas threatened a technological disaster on a global scale because one of the biggest nuclear power plants in Europe, Energadar, is just, can you imagine, 280 kilometers from Mariupol. Your Excellencies, this aggression against Ukraine has opened Pandora box for the international security. And it must be clear that there is no temporary solution. This conflict must be resolved, not frozen. It is now clear that if Ukraine does not succeed in restoring peace and territorial integrity, the revision of the border, spread of the terrorism, humanitarian and technological disaster flexing in nuclear muscle will continue. And it is a pleasure to share this panel with the, uh, all my friends, presidents of the Ukra country, which are Ukrainian partners. And today in Ukraine we have to fight our independence and our freedom. But not only. This is the freedom of Europe, independence of Europe, and security in the world. And I think that this is very right decision that most of the panel today dedicated to Ukraine and the Ukrainian crisis, dedicated to aggression against of Ukraine. And we together should find out the way how we should solve this question. I am a president of peace. I am not the president of war. And then my very first step in the position of the president was unilateral ceasefire and my peace plan. 
Based on my peace plan, while we were together in Wales on the NATO summit, we signed up Minsk Protocol and Minsk Memorandum. Very simple things. Immediate ceasefire. Release all the hostages. Close internationally recognized Ukrainian border. Withdraw all the foreign troops from my territory. Very simple democratic mechanism. Free and fair local election under Ukrainian legislation and under observation of the International Monitor. There is no any other ways how to represent the people of Donbass in the democratic and free country. But that's not, don't like our opponent. And I'm sure that only Minsk Memorandum and Minsk Protocol, only globally recognized Minsk Agreement can be the way how to stabilize the situation in Ukraine. And we will never recognize the fake election which takes place on the 2nd of November and where they elect so-called leader of the terroristic states, Lugansk and Donetsk People's Republic, who is directly responsible for the terroristic attack, and now they want that we have a direct dialogue with the terrorists. No, we think that we should have an election. We should have first ceasefire, then election, and create a democratic procedure for settlement of the conflict. But for the reaching all these things immediately, we need just very simple things. A ceasefire. Can you imagine that anybody in the 21st century in Europe can be against, without any precondition, just a ceasefire. And I think this is a very important challenge. We should have an answer in a very few hours or maybe maximum days. Who would be responsible for not signing the immediate ceasefire, which stop enormous casualties among the civilians? Ladies and gentlemen, restoration of peace are our ultimate goal, but we will take a commitment and joint effort. A few days ago, Germany and the whole world lost one of the most prominent figures in the modern history. Federal President Richard von Weizsäcker has played a decisive role not only in the process of German reunification, but in the fate of Ukraine as well. It was President Richard von Weizsäcker who, in his letter addressed to my predecessor, first Ukrainian President Leonid Kravchuk in December 26, 1991, recognize our independence. Once he said the German question will remain open as long as the Brandenburg Gate is closed. In the spirit of this word of a great German mind, I would simply like to reiterate that the Ukrainian question will remain unsolved as long as the heart of the people and politicians in Europe and in the whole world are closed for providing solid practical support to strengthen Ukrainians' independence politically, economically, but also military. We are an independent nation, and we have a right to defend our people. We are not violating never Minsk Memorandum, and we don't provide any offensive operation. But me, as a president of my country, as the commander-in-chief, are responsible for every single life of the Ukrainian. And if we do our best to sign up the peace protocol, the uh, ceasefire, we should have a right to defend our territory and our people with the support of the whole world. I know that many experts have argued that enhancing us military will provoke further aggression. On the contrary, we have seen that the lack of defense capability trigger offensive operation against Ukraine and spins the escalation. Over the course of the conflict, we have proven to be responsible that we will not use the defensive equipment to the attack. The stronger our defense, the more conviction is our diplomatic voice. We stand ready for the comprehensive and immediate ceasefire, so should be Russia without any precondition. In the same time, a complete and responsible road to the peace in Ukraine should be part of the broader context of how to restore the confidence on the international order. Because trust is broken, but it is the system that should not be trusted, but those who betrayed the trust. 
And uh, this year, we will celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Helsinki Final Act. And I am convinced that we will need a concrete mechanism to prevent a brutal violation by countries of their own international commitments taken under the fundamental document, in particular, UN Charter, the Helsinki Final Act, and Paris Charter. And such a behavior of the international relation should be no more tolerated in Europe, and I am talking about the new European Responsibility Charter. In this document, countries should reconfirm that the previous international obligation. The Charter could also provide a clear instrument and mechanism to punish for their violation. And we are ready to present our view and proposal to this Charter for further consideration in OEC. As we approach 2015 non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, Treaty Review Conference is to be held in New York this May. And let me also dwell on another important aspect of current international security environment. It is related to one of the consequences of the Ukrainian crisis, and I would call a broken promise on Ukraine. I mean Russia's clear violation of the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, in which together with the UK and the US, it pledged to respect my country's sovereignty and territorial integrity in return for Ukraine joining non-proliferation treaty. Very simple trade. In tw exactly 20 years ago, we give 1,420 nuclear missiles in exchange of a guarantee. And today, I think we have a right to receive non-lethal defensive weapon to defend my country in framework of the Budapest Memorandum. Another field to draw attention is lack of the legal responsibility under the international law for cynical and aggressive propaganda used to encourage and to incite ethnic, racial, and religious hatred. For just a year, the number of Russian citizens who were thinking bad or very bad about Ukraine has grown from 26 to almost 60 percent. We have created legal international tools and mechanisms to counteract propaganda to make the countries to behave responsibly and maintain principle of non-intervention in the internal affair of another state. And for over the year, Ukraine has been facing dramatic consequences, undeclared hybrid warfare. And it is very important that the states in the region devote more attention to hybrid state threats. Because now, not only our countries, but Romania, Bulgaria, Lithuania, and any other state neighboring Russia, on the, on the border we have a very strange military exercise. We need a clear strategic concept with a wide-range response instrument to tackle this complex problem and to enhance responsibility for applying hybrid war tactics. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few days, the March of Unity and Peace will take place in Kiev to commemorate the Maidan heroes. The event takes place exactly one year ago to pay a tribute to those who perished a struggle for freedom on their land. We pray for those who are still fighting. Remembering the most dramatic days of the Maidan, I hope that the most difficult time of Donbas bloodshed is over. I am an optimist. And we will come out again to demonstrate that Ukraine is united and in a strive for peace and transformation. And we will still have a lot of work to do to change my country. We look forward to Riga EU Eastern Partnership Summit, where we should no longer talk about the war or sanction. I want to meet our European partners to finally to talk about how we cooperate in strengthening peace, how we interact in support of reform of Ukraine, how we can introduce the visa-free regime for the Ukrainian people, and how we honor the goals and fulfill the dreams of the Ukrainian people to entering the European community. Thank you, and Slava Ukraini! Mr. President, thank you for that 